What's going on, everyone? Welcome on in to the Cleveland Browns Report by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here breaking down the latest trade rumors around the NFL and how they may be related to the Browns. So let's start things off by looking at the most popular trade rumor involving Cleveland, wide receiver Amari Cooper. What is the latest on this front? The latest is we still have a ways to go until the NFL trade deadline. That is November 5th. I don't believe Andrew Barry truly wants to accept defeat on the year, and trading Amari Cooper would surely be a sign of doing that. But I do think that Amari Cooper is playing not just, you know, out of the ordinary. I think we are seeing something similar to his time in Oakland before he was traded to the Cowboys back in 2018. The numbers are not good this year, but the off-season trade rumors, well, I don't want to believe can really contribute to something like this. It's hard to ignore that as a possibility with how bad of a start Cooper's had to the year outside of one game. But look at the Amari Cooper 2018 stats when he opened up the year with the Raiders through the first six weeks, 280 yards and one touchdown. Then he goes to the Cowboys and the trade rumors are behind him. And he balls out 725 yards and six touchdowns in nine games. So it's hard not to look at this as, well, Cooper's kind of been in this situation before, and we saw how it unfolded. He didn't really like being the center of trade conversations, which he was involved in before the season with Brandon Ayuk. And as a result, I don't want to say he is sabotaging himself. That's certainly not the case here. He wants to get another contract. He's in a contract year. But maybe it's just tough mentally to put that behind him. He may say otherwise, but the numbers say differently. And now we look at a team like the Chiefs, who, by the way, just got dealt some bad news earlier this week. Rasheed Rice is indeed out for the season with an LCL injury, I believe it is. They're already down Hollywood Brown for the entire year from a preseason shoulder injury. So Amari Cooper to Kansas City has to be catching... Uh, Brent Beach's eye right now because his depth chart is led by Juju Smith-Schuster, who sucks. Xavier Worthy is a fun, I want to say gadget because that feels like a little bit disrespectful for his skill set, but he's also he's kind of been a better running back than receiver for them in a lot of ways. So if I were Andrew Barry and I was called by the Kansas City Chiefs to give him Amari Cooper for a third-round pick, i think long and hard about it. You're sitting at 1-4 and four right now. It does not look like this is a team that's going to turn it around. It'd be one thing if they were 1-4, and four, kind of like how the Bengals are 1-4, and four, where some of their losses were not good, like week one against the Patriots, but then you got a tough overtime loss where your holder just mishandles a snap, and that leads basically to a Ravens win. Now, the Browns' losses have just been buck kickings. This does not look like a team that's anywhere near figuring it out. So a third-round pick. If that's even an option for Cooper, how could you not be inclined to take it? How could you not be inclined to at least try and get some assets for what's going to be a very important draft next year? Now, my fear is Andrew Barry does not have a great track record at drafting. Now, in his defense, he has not had many first or second round picks to use, and that's usually where you get your best players from. But still you got to make something out of rounds three, four, and five. That's where the draft is made. And Barry in those rounds has missed more than he has hit. Next trade rumor, Andre Dillard, the former first-round pick for the Philadelphia Eagles. He is now with the Green Bay Packers as a backup swing tackle. And I came across a CBS Sports article which listed the Browns as a potential trade candidate to go after Andre Dillard. I don't think the Browns are going to be buyers. I'll just say that right now. But we have seen Andrew Barry make surprising, unexpected moves. Like, we didn't think he'd bring back Cade York, so we can't completely eliminate anything. I think it's a very slim chance. The only way I see the Browns trading for Andre Dillard is if they look at Dillard as a player they think is good and could get for cheap and could be a head start for them to replace Jed Wills or Jack Conklin if they expect to move on from him this off, this upcoming offseason and get Dillard in now. Now, the argument I would say to the other side is, why don't you just wait to sign Andre Dillard in the offseason? 
because it doesn't look like the Packers are going to be dying to bring back a swing tackle who hasn't played for them. And also, he stinks. Like, do you remember last year when the Browns played the Titans? Miles Garrett picked on Andre Dillard all game long. He didn't even get to play the entire season because he got benched, and he still managed to surrender 12 sacks. But the Browns' offensive line might be in for a major shakeup in a couple of months when the offseason gets here. Look at the cap hits. If Jed Wills comes back, he'll be the cheapest one after Ethan Posick of the bunch. But Tony Owen Teller are going to be two expensive guards and older guards. Jack Conklin going to be older and expensive and somewhat injury-prone tackle. So if the Browns plan on really blowing up this offensive line, maybe they look at Dillard as a guy they can bring in now, kind of get a head start on him being with the team, and look at him as a cheap, like, rental or short-term player at one of the two tackle positions. We're going to look at the other three trade rumors in just a second, but if you are looking for a Browns YouTube channel to join that gives you free daily content like we do here, consider subs uh, consider subscribing to the channel. We are closing in on 40,000 subscribers, so I really appreciate everyone that's already joined the channel. If you have, hit that th hit that like button and help us continue to grow. But if you're looking for a free Browns YouTube channel, hit that sub button. Moving on to our third trade candidate, Zadarius Smith. Similar to Andre Dillard, his name popped up in a CBS Sports article as a potential trade candidate for the Browns. They had him going to the Detroit Lions. Now, the Browns, of course, traded for Smith about year and a half ago, what's that, um, May 2023, after the 2023 season, they brought him back on a two-year, $23 million contract. He hasn't made too many big splash plays yet this season, but he's still a very productive and efficient edge rusher. Pro Football Focus ranks him 45th out of 113 qualifying pass rushers, defensive ends, edge rushers. And this year, he's up to three sacks, two tackles for loss through the first five games. And plus, we know, I mean, pass rushers at the NFL trade deadline is crack cocaine to an attic. Like, that's what teams contending are looking for. And they will often overpay for a pass rusher if they feel like we are one rotational edge rusher away from having a complete defense. I think for Zadarius Smith, this is something that probably you wait on until November 5th. Hope that he can improve his own market because he's 30-plus years old. He's going to have a decent amount of money left on his contract for this year and next year. So teams may not be rushing to trade for him right now, but if he puts together a couple of big games here going into the trade deadline, he could improve his value from maybe like a 6th to a 4th, a 5th to a 3rd, something like that. Before we look at our last two trade targets and candidates, really quickly, a shout out to our sponsor, which is this awesome deal over at Fanatics, where you can get a Browns hat and t-shirt combo, 25% off when you use code chatsports.com slash CLE combo. So if you want to get some new Browns gear in your closet without breaking the bank, save a lot of cash while also getting not just a hat or a t-shirt, but getting both items 25% off. All right, let's move on to our final two. It's a pair of defensive tackles for the Browns, Shelby Harris and Dalvin Tomlinson. Let's somewhat lump them together because there are some similarities between these two guys. We can start things off with Shelby Harris, who in the offseason signed a two-year, $9 million contract. Now, what I want you guys to pay close attention to for Harris and for any player over the next couple of weeks that might get traded, everyone say it with me. We look at the base salary. We do not look at players' cap hits. A team does not take on a player's cap hit. They take on the remaining base salary. If a player makes $10 million in base salary, take that $10 million, you divide it by 18. They get 1 18th of that $10 million every single week, a check in the mail, probably direct deposit, okay? When we are five, six, seven, eight weeks through the season, a team has already paid out 5 18ths, 6 18ths, 7 18ths of their base salary. So a team trading for that player is only acquiring 
the remaining money on the base salary that has not been paid out. So that's why some teams like to wait right till the trade deadline so they have to pay one less check to that player and let the previous team pay one more check to that player. So when it comes to Harris and Tomlinson, I think both these players are potential trade candidates for the Browns because teams like to add to their defensive line similar to the pass rusher, pro, pass rusher position. And both of these guys have had really strong seasons so far this year. And both of these guys have low base salaries for, well, Shelby Harris has a low base salary. Tomlinson still has two years beyond this season on his contract, which is why I think if there's one guy that's more likely to get moved than the other, I would say Shelby Harris because he is a little bit cheaper than Dalvin Tomlinson. So for any team that wants to get a good defensive tackle without signing himself up for a big payday in the future, Harris is your more likely option, right? Whereas Tomlinson, you're now attached to him for 2025 and 2026 because he's only in the second year of a four-year contract with the Browns. You look at both players' stats so far this year, I think both players play positions that maybe don't pop up much in the box score, but they play important roles. And I think both guys have had strong starts to the year. I think their PFF rank um, reflects that, both players in the top third of their position group. So once again, if a team is looking for a good run stopper that has solid pass rush upside, Harris and Tomlinson are going to be attractive names and Harris being a little bit cheaper of the bunch. When it comes to these five players, here are my predictions. I think Amari Cooper is going to get traded. I think we should pass on trading for Andre Dillard. I think Zadarius Smith will probably stay, but this one I could easily be willing to flip to going. I think Shelby Harris will go. I think the Browns are going to hold on to Tomlinson. He's under 30. Uh, he just turned 30 or he's under 30, but regardless, he's only in year 1.25. Like, you know, he's one year and a quarter into a four-year contract, I don't, and he's played well, so the only reason why the Browns would want to move on from him is if a team gives him a, tr a great trade offer, in which is probably unlikely just given his age and his contract, no team's going to give a huge draft pickup for that. Whereas Harris is a lot cheaper. He's not here forever, like Tomlinson hopefully will be for a much longer. So Harris is a lot easier to move on from. So give me your trade prediction, though, for the five guys we talked about or anyone else. Let me know who you think could be going, who could be coming. Just get in the comment section. I want to hear from everyone watching right now. Before we sign off, quick plug here. Hit us up on Instagram, Browns Report IG. Trying to grow my Instagram presence over there. So if you're on Instagram, follow us, Browns Report IG.